Hello and welcome everyone. I'm John M. Hawkins. The show is called My Strategy. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We're very happy to be here with you today on this Saturday and glad you could join us. My Strategy radio show episodes are live on Saturdays at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. Today we're going to be talking about knowledge, facts, truth, opinions, and more. In this episode, I'm talking about the many different views that are shared in society. I'm going to talk a little bit about the concept of knowledge, discuss some real-world examples that we're seeing, review some scientific method constructs, and share some strategies that you can use to separate fact from fiction. Well, very happy to be here with you today. Saturday is a great day of the week to reflect. Keep in mind that any day is a good day for you to assess your strategy. And this show is all about personal development. So the information we share on this show is designed to help you make better decisions. Now, the My Strategy radio show continues to grow. We're available on iHeart, iTunes, Player FM, SoundCloud, YouTube, Spreaker, and many more digital platforms. So if you'd like to go listen to a past episode, you can find it there. There's also a videocast version on YouTube. Uh, you can find me on most social media platforms. My Twitter handle is at HawkinsJohn. And our website is JohnMHawkins.com. That's JohnMHawkins.com. And just like anything in life, we need to have a strategy and a plan to help us reach our goals because the best laid plans don't always work. This week I'm looking for stories on knowledge, facts, truth, opinions, and more. If you have any good examples, perhaps a tip or a trick, please send it along my way. I'm always looking forward to hearing from you. All right, so today we're going to be talking about knowledge, facts, truth, opinion, and more. We're going to talk about opinionated people and how they might be saying lots and lots of different things. And in today's day and age, it is becoming increasingly more difficult, myself included, to separate what is truth, what is knowledge. And it's come to a point where I've decided that if I'm struggling with this, I need there must be others. And so we're going to talk about it. So we're going to talk a little bit also about what is knowledge and how knowledge refers to awareness or familiarity with the various objects. Of course, this isn't anything new. There's uh, different studies out there that you can read uh, with regard to how humans know things, uh, also you know, how we go about questioning the real world and what exists. I won't get too deep into it because we're going to apply this to our personal development, so take from it what you can. We're going to talk about a use case, a real-world example, with regard to COVID-19. As you know, uh, there's been many different uh, hypotheses, theories, truths, facts that are coming out. And as a result of that, uh, it can be difficult to make an educated decision. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. Uh, we're going to talk about the scientific method. That is how you go about proving data. I'm sorry, go about getting to truth and knowledge uh, using scientific means. We're, we're then going to talk a little bit about some strategies that we can apply in our daily lives uh, to help us deal with all this information. And hopefully, hopefully, we're going to be able to separate fact from fiction. Now, keep in mind that this is an absolutely massive topic. So today, we're just going to get started and it if it makes sense to do another show on it, I'd be more than happy to oblige you. All right, so we're going to start off with an article by Clifford Lazarus, and it's called Facts, Truths, Beliefs, Opinions, and Alternate Facts. It starts off by saying, Henry was regarded as opinionated. He said, I saw the best movie ever, he announced to his associates. Chris said, do you mean you've just seen a movie that you enjoyed? No, said Henry. I know the difference between a good and a bad picture. Gordon then chimed in. 
most of the time, he said. It seemed to be a matter of opinion. Wrong, Henry exclaimed. It is a matter of fact. And I think this sums up 2020 and, and the past and the years prior to that. We're always hearing statements like this. It used to be that someone would say, I think, I feel. Now, they're, they're uh, so opinionated that they're taking these and projecting them as fact. So the author goes on, Clifford goes on to say, do you know anyone who speaks with great certainty about everything? Someone who makes statements such as wrong, that's ridiculous. You're completely incorrect when someone disagrees with him or her. Such people are often insufferable and seldom genuinely liked. Their philosophy is, I think I know, therefore I absolutely know. Or they declare, my opinion is not just an opinion, it is fact. Being right is very important to people, even when they're dead wrong. They don't let actual facts get in the way of their opinions. They fail to realize that there is a big difference between fact on the one hand and truth opinion, belief, and taste, and preference on the other hand. Moreover, just because we dislike or disprove of something does not make it wrong. A fact can be tested or checked. Lincoln was born in 1809. Cereal contains 21 grams of sugar, a specific cereal, I should say. The speed of light is 186,000 miles per second in a vacuum. A belief, opinion, taste, or preference cannot be Something like corn tastes better than peas, long hair is more attractive than short hair, biking is more fun than swimming. What's more, truths and even cherished beliefs change when, while actual facts tend to remain the same. For example, a thousand years ago, when people started uh, stated the earth was flat, only a few thousand years old, in the center of the universe, they were speaking the truth. But now we know our planet is spherical. It's approximately 4.5 billion year old, years old and orbits a rather typical star, which is but one of many billions in the galaxy, which is itself but one of many billions in an expanding universe of an unimaginable size. One might also say now infinite. This is the truth of the current age, and more importantly, facts that are not likely to change in the future. Of course, there will be inevitable those people whose truth does not square with objective facts. They will claim that the Earth is indeed a mere 6,000 years old. The Flintstones were basically an animated documentary. Similarly, an alternative fact is just a feeble effort to promote what might be one's truth as actual fact. When in actuality, however, a fact is not just a matter of opinion, it is an incontrovertible, verifiable reality that is grounded in objective evidence. It has arrived precisely because the alternatives have been disproven. Still, every person has a right to express their opinions without being ridiculed or shouted down. It's important to avoid attacking or labeling those who disagree with us. You're listening to My Strategy. I'm your host, John M. Hawkins, coming live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Well, we're gonna, when we come back, we're going to talk about knowledge. What is it exactly? We'll be right back. Hello and welcome back, everyone. I'm John M. Hawkins. The show is called My Strategy. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We're very happy to be here with you today. Uh, today we're talking about knowledge, facts, truth, opinions, and more. Right before the break, we were talking about how there's lots of opinionated people out there. And while they're certainly entitled to their own opinion, that doesn't mean that what they are opining or stating is a fact, nor does it mean that what they, the fact that they have stated is a truth. So this show is all about going deeper into this subject because, quite frankly, um, after 2020, I'm having a hard time figuring out what is fact, what is real, what is not. I assume many of you 
are in a similar position. And since the show is all about personal development, we're unpacking this subject to try and help us understand and get tools to better be able to process, I guess is a good word, the information that's coming to us. In this segment, I want to talk about what is knowledge. I'm going to cover it very lightly. Um, but before I do that, I want to um, talk a little bit about hypothesis versus theory. The word theory gets used quite a bit in, um, in our society today. It has uh, negative and positive connotations, but I wanted to describe it um, from a definition perspective so that we have an understanding. A hypothesis is either a suggested explanation for an observable phenomenon or a reasoned prediction of a possible causal relationship upon, among multiple phenomena. In science, a theory, on the other hand, is tested, well substantiated, unifying explanation for a set of verified, proven facts. A theory is always backed by evidence. A hypothesis is only a suggested possible outcome and is testable and falsifiable. It's an article that goes on to talk about the various definitions and how it goes through and talks about the differences. I won't go into full detail, but I think from a background perspective, it's important for us to be aware of what all this these terminology means so that we can use it um, in, and process it as we're trying to come up with our own strategy. Shifting gears, going over to what is knowledge. This is an article by Greg Henriques. Greg starts off, in everyday usage, knowledge refers to awareness of or a familiarity with various objects, events, or ideas, or ways of doing things. But as philosophers have noted for centuries, things get fairly complicated rather quickly. Consider, for example, the question, what is real? Take a look at your desk. Is that object in front of you on your desk real? Are the trees outside your window real? What is the number pi? What about the pain from the slight cut on my finger? Is that real? He says, as one ponders these questions, they quickly give rise to the question of how do I come to know things in the first place? separating the how from the what of knowledge. With some reflection, it becomes clear, at least to some extent, what is real for me depends in part on how I come to know things. For example, my perceptical cognitive background structures allow me to experience and understand that the Coke bottle on my desk or other object is real. Different perceptual or cognitive background would result in different reality. This point is well made in the 1980 film, The Gods Must Be Crazy, which tells the story about a dramatic impact that a Coke bottle that fell from the sky after falling out of it, that fell from a sky from an airplane, had landed in an, ice, in an area where there was an isolated tribe in the Kalahari Desert. And if you've not seen that movie, it's, it's, I watched it uh, as a kid, and it is interesting, but that's, that's the concept of the movie. You've got this tribe out there, and a Coke bottle falls, and they don't know what a Coke bottle is, so they start to look at it from a different perspective. The tribesmen interpreted the bottle as a gift from the gods. The film tracked how that meaning permitted the tribe an impact on its members. This brief example highlights the two broadest angles of philosophers' take on knowledge, which is that of epistemology and ontology. Ontology refers to the question of reality and is about determining what can be said to be 
to really exist in the world. Epistemology refers to how we humans know things, the theory of knowledge, and would explain what knowledge was, how humans could come to know things, what truly existed in the world, and the complicated relationship between the two. I think this is interesting, because if you think about it, in today's society, in the world, information that we get can be treated a couple of different ways. You know, there's the ability to take a look at something, like a Coke bottle on your desk. You can touch it. You can see it's there. Th that's something you can experience. But if a Coke bottle were to fall out of an airplane to a tribe that's never seen a Coke bottle, and they have no idea that Coca-Cola belongs in it and that it's a drink, they have no idea what the purpose of this vessel is that has come their way. So they use it the best they can, and their interpretations might not be as accurate as what we would be. It wouldn't be. How would they? One of the oldest and most vulnerable traditions in philosophy is knowledge characterizes knowledge as justified true belief. Although not all philosophers agree that justified true belief does, in fact, adequately characterize the nature of knowledge, it remains the most dominant concept of knowledge. Thus, for many years, knowledge consists of three elements, human belief or mental representation about a state of affairs. Number two, accurately corresponds to the actual state of affairs. And three, legitimized by logical and empirical factors. To be clear about this last element, the author says, it's not considered knowledge, for example, when a child asked about the molecular nature of water says H2O, simply because that child is parroting what he or she heard. In contrast, a chemist who knows H2O has knowledge because they represent it in a meaningful way. They are able to justify it by much prior knowledge and careful deductive work. I think this is an interesting concept here. Just because somebody has fact, and it may be a fact, that does not mean that they have knowledge about that fact. And to me, this is incredibly important because in today's society, we are getting messages from everywhere, right? Um, before we had social media, it was at the uh, dinner table. Uh, we're getting facts at holiday parties and gatherings. And somebody is going to say something that a fact and opine or suggest that they have knowledge on that subject when, in fact, they do not have knowledge on that subject. And I think that's one of the challenges that we find in today's discourse, um, for lack of a better term, a word, is that you know, just because somebody has a fact or has data, that does not mean that they are knowledgeable on it. So from a personal development perspective, and this, this might go without saying, but always consider the source. If somebody who is not an expert is giving you a piece of data or a piece of fact, then we probably aren't going to trust them as much as somebody who does have it. The article goes on and talks uh, quite extensively about the different types of knowledge. I don't think uh, we're going to have time to go through all of it, but it is interesting for us to start thinking about knowledge a little bit differently. What is knowledge? What is truth? What is fact? You're listening to My Strategy. I'm your host, John M. Hawkins, coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. When we come back, we're going to apply some of this to COVID-19 and uh, talk a little bit about how the knowledge, truths, and facts have impacted our ability to make good decisions. We'll be right back. Hello and welcome back, everyone. I'm John M. Hawkins. The show is called My Strategy. And we're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We're very happy to be here with you today on this Saturday. Or if you're listening in the podcast format of this show, whatever day you are uh, listening to this, uh, it's good to, good to hear you. Good to be with you. Um, right before the break, we were talking about what is knowledge. talked a little bit about how we come to know things. And um, there's different theories on how one comes to know something. 
Um, in this segment, I want to talk a little bit about or apply it to a specific scenario. You could call it a use case. We're going to apply it to COVID-19 because COVID-19 is just one of the many, is a good example because it's relevant uh, in our in our society today. And, you know, as when COVID-19 first came out, we didn't know a lot about it. There's data that came out. There's theories. There were there were hypotheses. Uh, then they were take you took some data and then they've created these theories. And the challenge is that, you know, from our perspective, as people trying to consume this information, uh, it can be uh, hard to make a personal decision when you're getting facts one day and then a contrary fact another day. And so, you know, I, I think this is a great example, though, because if we can understand how to process the things that happened with regard to the COVID timeline, uh, it'll give us some tools and tips to be able to process information uh, with regard to other um, types of uh of scenarios, um, one of them being <laughs> political. So in any event, let's get started. So I've got an article here by John G. Cotone, and this is uh, a four-part series. We're probably going to cover about three of the parts in it. Uh, just interesting read, interesting how he looks at it. Um, so he says, what do you know? The illusion of knowledge amid COVID-19. What does it mean to know something? Sounds like a simple question when you really, until you really think about it. If a friend told you they had solved a math problem that only a handful of other people in the world could solve and you weren't one of them, would you know if the friend's answer to the problem was correct? Or if a psychic medium accurately described an event from your childhood after telling you they were communicating with your deceased grandmother, would you know whether the psychic was telling you the truth? You read a news report about a man who was shot and killed by a police officer after an altercation. The officer alleges that the man threatened to shoot him as he reached into his jacket pocket. However, the man was unarmed and there were no other eyewitnesses. Could you ever know what happened? The study of knowledge is a big fancy name, or it has a big fancy name, epistemology. It's a word that few people know, but more people are learning day by day. Why? Because COVID-19 earthquake exposed a fault line just below the surface of our reality, revealing that much of our knowledge to be a socially constructed illusion. Don't believe me? Consider the following example. You want to visit your mother, with whom you haven't seen in months, but you worry about a persistent cough you've had for a few weeks. So you go get a COVID-19 nasal test swab, and your results come back negative. Great! You now feel safe knowing that you don't have the virus, and you can visit your mother. Or so you think, because after telling your mother the good news, she forwards you an article about COVID-19 nasal swab has a high rate of false negatives. So it's another fact. Just to add more to the confusion, you get the follow-up call from your doctor you saw at the walk-in clinic and tells you that while your test results are negative, they believe your symptoms are consistent with COVID-19. Bewildered, you turn on the TV to your favorite TV news channel, and it's reporting that several states that the criteria has changed for what counts as a valid COVID-19 test. Allegedly, to lower the number of infected cases, so people feel safe to go outside again and bolster the economy. But then your friend sends you a link to a, another video on a video site that the doctors are being encouraged to over, overdose, over-diagnose COVID-19 because their facilities are getting government kickbacks. The author goes on to say, what are the facts and what do you really know? Each day presents us with a buffet of decisions we need to make about things. And if we're honest with ourselves, we don't actually know about. Even a simple question like, is it healthy to eat an egg every day, can send you down a rabbit hole for weeks. 
Sure, we can search the internet for information uh, to help us answer these questions, but information itself is not knowledge. Information is just a collection of data, and data can be gathered in ways that are either valid or invalid, reliable or unreliable. And if you don't have experience in a subject firsthand, or firsthand experience in something reported in the news, how can you ever know if it is real and the truth? You're listening to My Strategy. I'm your host, John M. Hawkins, coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. When we come back, we're going to continue talking about knowledge, and we're also going to talk about uh, the pros and cons of the scientific method. We'll be right back. Hello and welcome back, everyone. I'm John M. Hawkins. The show is called My Strategy. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio, so I'm happy to be here with you today. My Strategy Radio Show episodes are live on Saturdays at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. Today's show, we're talking about knowledge, facts, truth, opinions, and more. Talking about the many different views shared in society today. Talk about the concept of knowledge. Discussed a, we just discussed a real-world example from COVID. We're going to talk a little bit more about that, uh, review the scientific method, and share some strategies that you can use to separate fact from fiction. And as I stated at the beginning of the show, uh, we're talking about um, this topic today um, because it, every day I get more and more information, and it appears to be conflicting and contradicting. There's facts that come out. There's people who state something that they believe is the truth. Uh, they say that they know things uh, when, in fact, they don't have an understanding of uh, e either the science or the, the, the study in that field. And so this show really is about finding a way to, well, first of all, my strategy radio show is all about personal development. And I figured that if I'm having a hard time trying to figure this out as somebody who studies this, that others might be having a hard time as well. So today we're going through some of the concepts and trying to put them in as, as good of a perspective as we can. And then the goal is that um, next week uh, we'll be able to process information differently because or, or at least see it for what it is. And that's what I'm trying to get out of the show is being able to see information you know, not look at it purely from a, a physical response, emotional response, but be able to look at the source, consider the source. I mean, th these are standard concepts that we grew up with, but it seems like in this day and age, I might have lost some of my way, and maybe you have too. All right, so right before the break, we were talking about COVID-19 and gave an example about the nasal swabs and you know, you get all these different pieces of facts and you're not you're different facts and you're not exactly sure what to believe. So that's what we talked about. We talked about knowledge versus, you know, a fact. Um, this article continues on to say, and this is what we we're talking about right before the break. In the absence of knowledge, people rely on something else that is usually relegated to the realm of religion. And that is called faith. Um, I think faith or also trust to me are, they're different. Uh, words have meaning and they're different, but uh, you know, sometimes we trust somebody or we have faith in something. I group those together. It says, knowledge and faith go hand in hand because we don't know about something directly. We accept as no the knowledge as information that we get from individuals that we have faith in, or I'll also say that we have trust in. But what if those individuals and institutions made mistakes in the past, or worse, have been accused of corruption? Right? So you're getting information, whether it's from a, a source that you think is credible, they've always been credible, or you're getting information and something happens to erode that trust, erode that faith. The author goes on to say, today we're mired in a crisis of faith or trust because so many of our heroes and virtually all of our institutions 
for example, government, journalism, science, and religion, have not only made significant mistakes, but have a history of scandals whittling away our faith, whittling away at our faith. As a result, we are left not only to doubt the most prominent heroes and institutions of a culture, but the existence of facts and knowledge itself. In short, we have been pushed off a cliff and into epistemological freefall. I hope I said that right. He goes on to say, d debates about this are not new. Our teachers and textbooks tell us philosophers have argued for centuries what it means to know something and what makes knowledge distinct from belief. The COVID-19 pandemic, which has emerged in a time of ubiquitous media and the world await a wash of conspiracy theories, has made these debates much more consequential, consequential as we struggle to make life and death decisions that confront us. There's an interesting perspective here. When we don't have faith, when we don't have trust or knowledge, we then rely on faith or trust. But when we have had misinformation, corruption uh, of organizations, and we hear messages, we don't know what to believe. When an individual is completely devoid of faith, the resulting condition is one of paralyzing paranoia. On the other hand, we must recognize that faith and belief are not the same as knowledge. And if we're honest with ourselves, we must concede that most of the things we think we know are just beliefs bolstered by information give it, given to us by the people and institutions we have faith in. I think this is an important takeaway, and this might be helping me to understand you know, where I am in this, and perhaps yourself. He goes on to say, Socrates said, I know that I know nothing. As such, it came as no surprise that there is a long-standing debate among Plato scholars about whether Socrates actually said this, of course, since it required these facts from an, since this author acquired these facts from an article on Wikipedia. And he can't claim to know if any of this is true. Interesting perspective there by John Catoni. Talk a little bit about scientific method, pros and cons of scientific method. Philosophers as, as far back as Plato have defined knowledge as justified true belief. However, skeptics have challenged this notion for century, reasoning that some evidence one person considers valid in justifying as belief is true, while the other may consider it biased or incomplete. And so tr is true with the scientific method, with its insistent insistence on direct observation and the objective testing of a hypothesis has a major advantage for our civilization. However, just because we have a scientific method, the author goes on to say, that there are some concerns with the testing methods that we use. So it further, con it further conflicts us because now we don't know if we can trust those scientific tools. Interesting. You're listening to My Strategy. I am your host, John M. Hawkins, coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. When we come back, we're going to talk about some strategies and tips to help us deal with the fact or fiction. I'll be right back. Hello and welcome back, everyone. I'm John M. Hawkins. The show is called My Strategy, and we're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. Well, this week we've attempted a very, very big subject, and it has to do with knowledge, facts, truth, opinions, and more. I guess this week I got to a point where I started to question what I knew, what I didn't know. Lots of different facts are coming out on all a variety of subjects. And so this week, uh, in this show, I thought it'd be good, since we're all about personal development, is to explore some of this, unpack it, in the hopes that I can provide some insights into the process, and hopefully in providing that insight, we're going to be better able to, pers to grow as a person, because we're going to know what to do with all that information that we get. So right before the break, we were talking about a number of things. One of them was the scientific method. I want to talk a little bit more about that, and then I'm going to 
transition. Uh, we're continuing along with our article on John C. Catoni, and it's a four-part article. Uh, we talked a little bit about you know the faith and, and what the difference was between faith and trust. Um, you know, and that is when we don't know something, we have to have faith and trust in people uh, to believe what they're telling us until they say something that, uh, or they're corrupt, or something happens, and then we don't believe them anymore. Um, so over the past decade, we've learned that many of the scientific findings we have taken as fact have been retracted. Right? Just when we thought we knew what was happening, we knew what was going on, we have to now hear that many of those scientific findings have been retracted, either due to error or fraud. This is according to Brainyard and you in 2018. In the field of psychology, specifically, we have been coming to terms with our own reckoning, known as the replication crisis. Since 2011, Paschler and Wagonmakers, 2012, though slightly less publicized, a replication crisis in the field of neuroradiology may end up having more serious consequences. In 2016, researchers from Sweden, Jukland et al. in 2016, discovered a statistical anomaly that likely invalidated 40,000 40, fMRI studies of neurology over a 15-year period. Part of the problem with science, science is that if we try to study more sophisticated phenomenon, we need more sophisticated equipment, which moves us further and further from direct observation and requires that we place our scientific faith in machines and other people's work. As Beck Crew, 2016, points out in a summary of Yucklin's et al. findings, when scientists are interpreting data from an FRI machine, they're not looking at the actual brain. What they're looking at is the image of the brain divided in many tiny voxels then interpreted by a computer program. So there's, here's an interesting one. You have 40,000 fMRI studies that are done, but now they find that there might be a flaw in the, the algorithm. You know, years ago we knew all this to be true, but now we find a new fact which erodes the trust, the faith that we had. You see, even look at mathematics, the purest of STEM disciplines seems to be suffering from a crisis of confidential of confidence. The validity of countless proofs that form the foundation of modern mathematics has recently been called into question, according to mathematician Kevin Buzzard. He told attendees at a 2019 conference. The greatest proofs, proofs have become so complex that practically no human on earth can understand their detail. Now, there's so many moving pieces. How do we know what is real? In any event, it does pose a significant issue when we now have a hard time believing our scientific methods and the tools that make them up. This isn't getting any easier, folks, I'm telling you. I thought we could answer these questions. I'm going to continue on with another article by John Catoni, and this is part four, and he talks about some tips for living in a postmodern world, because we're getting to the point where we're going to need some answers here. Uh, he goes on to talk a little bit about the man in La Mancha with Don Quixote. And Don Quixote exclaims, facts are the enemy of truth. Is that true or not? We know that, you know, it comes down to one's perception. So he goes on and talks about that. I think it's important, though, to start thinking about this and how are we going to deal with this, what the author calls the illusion of knowledge. And so he gives some recommendations. And this is the author speaking as a clinician, a scientist, and a man of ways to do it. He gives us four things to think about. One is the beware of rectangles. Virtually all the content you absorb from your rectangle, that's a TV, smartphone, computers, etc., has been edited to maximize sensationalism. So if you process information there, be careful. They might be stoking your emotions. Remember the cube. Earlier he talked about a Rubik's Cube and how while you can see one side at a time, it is impossible for you to see all six sides at the exact time with the human eye. Therefore, while you're looking at it from one perspective, know there are other perspectives. Balance faith with skepticism. When it comes to faith, it's easy to err on either the end of the spectrum. 
If we don't have faith in experts, spe specialists, and institutions, you can easily become paralyzed with paranoia. Have faith. Particularly if, and, but having absolute faith, particularly if it's a blind faith in anyone or anything, can lead you to vulnerable exploitation. We definitely don't want to get to a point where we are paranoid. And finally, he says, it's okay to say, I don't know. Throughout this article series, he's tried to reinforce that much of what we think is actual belief, taken as truth, because it came from a source from which we have faith. It is the ego that pushes us to say that we know something when we really don't. But if there is just one recommendation from this series that you remember, please let it be this. Sometimes the most honest and courageous thing you can say in a situation is, I don't know. So those are some tips for John Tony. And as always, we have our five-step process that we use to build our strategy. So as you're thinking about those steps, your personal development strategy, when it comes to processing all of this information, be aware. Assess and analyze that data. What is truth? What is not? What are you taking on faith? What are you trusting? Who's providing that information? Come up with a strategy and a plan. If you're having a hard time because you don't know something. We don't want to get to a point where all of a sudden we become paranoid. And I think that's why it is so important for us to deal with this subject, understand it, so that we have a way uh, to be better people. You're listening to My Strategy. I'm your host, John M. Hawkins, coming live from BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. When we come back, we're going to help you put your plan in place. We'll be right back. Hello and welcome back, everyone. I'm John M. Hawkins. The show is called My Strategy. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. Well, in case you missed this broadcast, you can listen on iHeartRadio, Apple iTunes. If you'd like to have something covered in the show, you can send an email to talk at johnmhawkins.com. That's talk at johnmhawkins.com. Or you can call us at 1-844-MY-STRATEGY. It's one eight four four. my strategy This week, we've been talking about knowledge, facts, truth, opinion, and more. Been talking about the many different views shared in society, talking about the concept of knowledge, discussed a real-world example with COVID. We reviewed the scientific method and unfortunately found problems with it, shared some of the strategies that we can use to separate fact from fiction. And this show was really, you know, this week, uh, I just got to a point where I was starting to question facts, knowledge, you know, what is real, what is not real. And so that is the impetus for doing the show. All right, so we started off talking about, you know, the truth, facts, beliefs, opinions, and alternate facts. And we found that many people do say a lot of things. People with certainty aren't always right. They say something with certainty. However, being right is very important to people, it's even when they are dead wrong. Now, on the other hand, facts can be tested, but not all facts are truth. We're going to talk a little bit about knowledge. In everyday usage, we knowledge refers to an awareness or familiarity with various subjects, ideas, or ways of doing things. What becomes real for us depends on how we know things talked about the various studies of knowledge. Talked a little bit about a case study of COVID-19 and what it means to do something and what it means to know something, and yet we're getting so many facts. So what is the truth? Each day we are presented with a buffet of decisions, and we're not always able to make decisions on that. So we have to rely on faith and trust. But when we lose faith or trust in an institution or a person, it destroys what we thought we knew, the truth we thought we knew. We also talked about the pros and cons of scientific knowledge. And there are things that we thought were true based on scientific evidence, and then somehow the tool used to give us that data is wrong. I think it's important for us, though, to start thinking about ways that we can deal with this. Beware of the rectangles. These are the TVs, computer screens, and others. Remember the cube. You can't see every single side of a Rubik's Cube at the same time. 
balance faith with skepticism and saying, it's, I don't know, is always okay. And it's going to come down to breaking habits and awareness of those patterns if we want to change, which means that we're going to have to consciously prioritizing and committing to our goals and our intentions. And if you're having a challenge understanding what is going on in the world today, uh, you might need to sit down and think about the activities that you're doing. Start thinking about how you are processing this information. Where are you getting your information from? And if you can do that, it will hopefully give you the perspective that you need so that when you do get information, there's a process you go through and you can rationalize that information. And if you can do that, it's going to put you in a much stronger position because you are now in control. You're not reliant on the fact because that's a fact, but it might not be the truth. You might uh, believe you know something, but if there was a problem with the scientific method, you can now prove that. All I'm saying is there's lots of hope for us, and I hope this uh, episode was helpful. You're listening to my strategy. We'll see you next time.